All right. Thanks for coming. My name is Isaac Stern. I'm with Keenan. So I'm going to talk about the SERP portion. Um, feel free to ask questions. It'll be helpful for you and for your neighbor. All right. So I like to think about retirement in buckets. So Preston was talking about the STRS bucket earlier, right? So we know that. You know you have your STRS bucket, but maybe you have a 403B, 403B bucket or an IRA bucket. Well, now there's a new separate bucket, and that's the SERP bucket, right? Part of the retirement picture, but separate. So although related, they are not connected. STRS is going to be your primary source of income, voluntary for you, and paid for by the district. So why would you take the SERP? So we know the people that were going to retire this year anyway, because they were high-fiving each other as they walk in, right? Because they hit the SERP lottery. So those people, no reason not to take it. But maybe you were thinking about next year or the year after that. So this potentially could cover that gap for you. That's a health care gap for health care costs. You know, maybe that's mo uh, living expenses. Maybe that's moving expenses. We're seeing a lot of people take this and move to Texas or wherever because it's, it's expensive in California. It's a great place, but it's expensive. Everybody's different, right? So just something to think about. Everybody's decision is individual. Next one. So I'm going to go through the example of the different payment options that was in the handout. However, I think everybody else got their uh, actual numbers emailed to them or mailed to them. We're going to have updated numbers next week at your individual counseling sessions, OK? Um, this last point may return to service part-time with STRS or PERS after 180 days. Something to note. So if you retire from STRS, you have to wait six months before you can come back on a part-time basis. One, if you want to. Two, if they want you back, right? <laughs> However, you don't have to retire from STRS, right? <laughs> so for those of you that are like, eh, I, I want to keep working. Well, you can. You can leave the district, get the SERP, and go work somewhere else. Continue on with STRS. So that is an option for some people, right? And if you don't retire from STRS, you could leave this district, go work at another one the next day. Right? There's no restriction. The restriction is only if you retire. Next slide. So how does the SERP work? So you're doing the group meeting now. Next week you have your in individual counseling session. Who already has theirs? All right. Good. If you don't, I can help you afterwards or you can go online and do that. There's, we added another person, so there's plenty of appointments left. So once the annuity goes, or excuse me, the SERP goes through, the annuity is purchased on your behalf by the district. So your payments will be coming from the annuity company, not from the district. Something to note, it takes the district five years to pay that off, right? So if you're thinking, oh, I'll just wait for the next SERP next year or two years, probably not, because it takes them five years to pay off. So it'll be at least another five years. So, you know, this is probably your one shot at it here. Keenan Financial Services, so we do the group meetings, we provide the counselors, any ongoing service you might need. All right, so here's the fun slide. So the benefit is 65% of one year salary, right? And it's based off of somebody that's 60 and a half, and the salary is about 82,000. So I'm gonna run through the different options here. Feel free to ask questions. So just for example, you'll have your own individualized sheet, correct? Correct. So I like to start at D because that is five year monthly payments. I choose that one because that is the least amount of time uh, for you to take your annuity. Meaning it's going to be 60 payments all the way up to lifetime on a monthly basis, right? There is no lump sum option. A few reasons for that. One, it takes the district five years to pay it off. Two, if you took that all at once, your taxes would be terrible that year, right? And three, the IRS limits about 54,000 how much you can get at one time. So that is why there is five years and up and no lump sum option. D through H, five through nine years. Notice there's a little star there. It's because you can roll those over. That means that if I want to roll over those funds to an IRA, a 403B, I can do that. And that, what I'm doing is I'm deferring those taxes to a later date. Good news, the IRS extended that date or age to 72. It used to be 70 and a half. So you used to only be able to roll over to 70 and a half. Now you can do it to 72. Once you hit 72, you can no longer roll that over and you have to start taking the money. 
and st start taking money out of those accounts, right? So on D through, D through H, the five through nine year, you can roll those over. If you don't roll it over on any of these, there's a 20% withholding. So what that means is it's not an extra tax, it's not a penalty, it's simply a withholding. So when you file your taxes at the end of the year, you get some of that back, you pay more, it all depends. So the question is, can I put it into a Roth IRA? And the answer is yes, but you're gonna be paying the taxes on the front end. If it's just a regular IRA, then you can roll that over directly and it would be the full amount, not the tax withheld amount. But you could do that. Yes. So D through H, the five through nine year, you can split those payments. So I want half to come to me, I want half to get rolled over. And I can change that up to twice per year. So if I decide actually I want it all to be rolled over, I can change that. So, and that can be any percentage that you want up to twice per year. Just on D through H, the five through nine year. So when do you pay the taxes if you roll it over? The answer is when you take it out of that account. So the IRS isn't very nice and they always want their money, right? So it's going to happen at some point. It's just a matter of is now the right time or is down the road the, nice, the right time? <coughs> is D pre or post tax? So that is pre-tax. So that would be 884 would be the amount rolled over. If you were taking that, your, your check would be 20% less. Yep. And that's just a withholding. So, I mean, depending on what your income during that time is, you could get some of that back, you could owe more. It really is dependent on your situation. So, so do you have to put, pay the withholding and the taxes? No. So the <coughs> answer is it's just like your paycheck, right? So they're just withholding that money because they want to make sure they get paid. But when you actually file your taxes, they'll true up. So you could owe more or get some of that back. So it's not a penalty. It's not an extra tax. It's, it's just what the federal government does. Is there a fee for rolling it over? No. So you can choose any account, existing or new or whatever you like, and roll that over. Um, and once it's in that account, you can do whatever you want with it. So, yeah. What is the fee structure on the plan? There is no fee structure. The district pays that separately. So the question is, is, are, is it earning interest? Yes, but very little. So, you know, if you're <laughs> looking to grow that money, generally people, and again, this is an individual decision, generally people will roll it over and put it into an account that's you have more interest or, you know, different investment options because it is very, very minimal. D through I, that's the five through 10 year. The 10 year, you can't roll that over. However, those all have beneficiaries, meaning that if I pass away year two, the remaining amount of the annuity is going to be paid out to my beneficiary until the annuity is fully paid out. My beneficiary can be anybody and I can change it, right? That's D through I, five through 10 years. So full amount of annuity is going to be paid out on the same schedule, monthly basis, right? I'm going to jump up to A, life only benefit, $224 a month. I get $224 a month as long as I live. So if I live to be 130 years old, I'm going to be well beyond 65% of salary, right? However, if I pass away tomorrow, there's no beneficiary and the payments stop, right? So there is an upside and a downside. <laughs> B, joint and 50% survivor. So one note, the survivor has to survive you. <laughs> and it cannot be changed, right? So generally, uh, <laughs> generally, uh, you know, it's a spouse, and usually the benefit, you know, the benefit is priced based on somebody being similarly aged, like a spouse. However, you could pick a child, a grandchild, whomever, but that benefit amount might re be reduced. So in this example, I get $206 every month, as long as I live, I pass away, my wife Kate doesn't have to deal with me anymore and gets $100 a month as long as she lives, right? So that's how the survivor works. All right, and C, life for 10 years, whichever is longer. So if you notice, it's $220 a month, that's about $4 less than the lifetime. I'm paying essentially a $4 a month insurance policy to ensure that that plan pays at least 10 years. So if I pass away year two, it pays the remaining ten, eight years to my beneficiary and then stops. However, if I live 30 years, it's gonna pay up to that 30 years. 
I pass away, it stops. So it pays at least 10 years to me or my beneficiary. Anybody have any questions on the options? Yes, sir. <laughs> if I pass away, my spouse gets Zippo. That's if my beneficiary is not my wife. So it's up to you. So your beneficiary could be your wife. No, 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 I'm just saying, it, whatever the beneficiary, you have to name a beneficiary now. Right. I know those. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it could be anybody. There's no restriction on who it is. So if you don't want it to be your wife, then yes, she would get Zippo. <laughs> the only one that does not have a beneficiary or a survivor is A. Okay. So that's the only one. Everyone else has some sort of beneficiary or survivor. Yeah, I it just have an asterisk, so you can't roll that over. Will my beneficiary receive a lump sum on my passing? No, they will get a monthly, it'll be the same schedule as what it is until it's completed. Can I change my beneficiary? Yes, you can. Right, so here are the eligibility guidelines. Must be a certificated non-management employee of the district, must be at least 55 years of age by June 30th, and must have at least 10 years of serv consecutive service with the district by June 30th. Must be eligible to retire from STRS. Again, don't have to retire from STRS, do have to leave the district, right? Makes sense. Must submit a notice of resignation retirement along with a SERP enrollment packet to the district no later than February 14th. There is a form the district will provide and we will provide the packets at the individual counseling sessions. If by chance you can't make one of those sessions, the district will have a packet for you. All right? It is the 14th. Employee may resign, retire from the district beginning May 1st, but must retire by June 30th. Regardless of when you retire, your first payment through the SERP is going to be August 1st, okay? In, uh, one more. Go back. In order for the plan to move forward, there must be at least 30 participants, and the district's savings must support the plan. Vacaville Unified uh, School District reserves the right to not approve the plan if it is not cost-effective. Employees reserve the right to rescind their resignation retirement should the plan not be approved. What does that mean? If the plan doesn't go through, you can say never mind, right? Good news, I'm optimistic it's gonna go through, right? So we have about 55 appointments for next week. Based on that, usually how many people do appointments and how many people take it, it looks good. But make sure you're telling your friends if they're, you know, kinda on the fence, look into it because, you know, you, you wanna hit that 30 if you're ready to go. So the question was, is there a limit? And there is not an upper limit. So generally, can we rescind the retirement from STRS if this doesn't go through? The district is going to let you know ASAP that it is going through when they can. So I, you know, Preston said it's a six month window there. I think you'd probably be okay to wait until after you know one way or the other, if that's dependent, sure. Because that's, that's only. Don't, don't retire from STRS until you know. Yeah. It's not, that, it's not that tight. I mean, some districts were doing this in May that's a different story, but you know, we're pretty early still. So who should I talk to about benefits? So yes, you could talk to the district. If you're Medicare eligible and not gonna be getting district benefits, the flyer there will help you shop for Medicare plans and plans outside of that. All right, next slide. There we go. Schedule your individual counseling session. So next week at the district office, Tuesday through Friday, uh, I encourage you to do it regardless of your situation. Some people wanna use that time to figure out how to sign the paperwork the fastest because they're out, right? Some people are on the fence, whether that's financial, whether that's, I don't know what I'm gonna do if I retire. Our counselors are not me, so that's good for you, and they're people that took the SERP or administered SERP at other school districts. So school teachers, right? So they can talk to you on a, you know, how it actually works, what they did, so on and so forth. They're not STRS experts, but if you're on the fence financially, bring as much information as possible and maybe they can help you figure it out, right? But they're not gonna have all the STRS information for you or anything. You have to bring that on your own. Uh, complete and submit a letter of re retirement and packet to the district no later than February 14th. Receive your first benefit on August 1st. So for your individual counseling session, again, I'm happy to help you sign up at the end of this or you can go online and do it yourself. Uh, you can bring spouse, family member, financial advisor, anybody you like.
Yeah, so you will get the packet at uh, the individual counseling session. They're not going to fill it out with you there, but they'll help you understand it, and then you can take it home, fill it out, bring it back. Can you fill it out there? There's probably not enough time. It's only a half hour appointment. So, I mean, you can always do an appointment, and if you have additional questions, do another appointment, or they're always happy to follow up via phone. Do you have to have identification? Yes. So when you turn in your packet, they do ask for a, a few pieces of information. So you can choose which ones those are, birth certificate, whatever, yeah. So they'll, it'll list what you need.